He's been named Canada's top jockey a record eight times and awarded a national honor, the Service Star, by his country, Barbados. At 114 pounds, Patrick Husbands, on any given Sunday, can be found atop a 1,000-pound thoroughbred, getting set to charge to the finish line at Toronto's Woodbine Racetrack. With more than 15,000 races and near 3,000 wins, Patrick took us beyond the stable gates to reveal a horse racing tradition firmly rooted in family and in Barbados. To the capital Bridgetown we go at 13 degrees north and 59 degrees west. It was the 1970s. The Garrison Savannah Racetrack in Bridgetown, Barbados. Nearby, on a family farm, little Patrick Husbands tried to keep up with his older brothers. My mom was more laid back. My dad was always pushing up all his four boys to be jockeys. And uh, so every evening we go up in the past, though, which we call Marine, Marine Gardens, and we try to outdo one that. Uh, by the 80s, older brother Anthony was the lead apprentice rider in Barbados, while young Patrick was still trying to find his footing. I come out and I was too small, 62 pounds. I was under four feet. Um, I had my helmet padded so I don't drop on my nose. My first, first ride now that I could get a chance to go on a racetrack. I was out front and um, when I swing for home, my knees are so weak, I start bouncing all over the place and they drop off the horse. And Anthony, come back, Daddy, you're going to kill that kid. He's too young, he's too young, he's too young. And then the next race I ride, I, I won. And, and Daddy's like, hey, 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 that's my boy. It would be the first in a lifetime of wins. Patrick would go on to become the youngest ever winner of the legendary Coxborough Gold Cup at 16 even after the devastating loss of his father a few months earlier. So my father only saw me ride three races and he passed away. Back in the days, nobody had a cell phone, right? So here on the loudspeaker and I hear the other riders, Patrick your husband's, Pat your husband's, call home, your dad passed away. Older brother Anthony, who by this time had moved away, urged Patrick to join him in Canada. There, he faced a frosty reception. Touched down in Canada in 1995. And, um, he was prejudice. And I was here for six weeks. Couldn't even get a horse exercise. And I could not get on a horse. And it's sad. A lot of tears is behind that. A lot of tears. It took three months before Anthony's boss decided to give Patrick a chance at Toronto's most elite Woodbine racetrack. That leg up was all he needed. First race I ride at Woodbine, I win. Three years later, I was a champion. From then on, the wins kept piling up. Leading them over to the top of the stretch, Patrick Husbands asks him for his heart, and he opens up. In 2003, he captured Canada's most prestigious Queen's Plate on his way to winning the Triple Crown. It is all Wando, sharp, strong, and a dominating winner of the Queen's Plate, Wando. Three years later, he even took on the world-famous Kentucky Derby, where he placed 10th. The flashy ball is in line, and they're off in the Kentucky Derby. And toward the inside, Sinister Minister, as Patrick expected. would become known for his fearlessness in riding bad horses. You're not trying to make yourself an idiot or a hero in terms of a bad horse, but you're, I, I believe that if you're bad, I'm bad at you, and my heart beats the same as you, you know. But being a champion isn't so easy. Patrick, like other riders, goes to extremes to stay close to 110 pounds. Even after consuming little more than a smoothie each day, he must still spend up to two hours in a sauna, like this one featured in the HBO documentary Jockey. He even vomits, losing up to four pounds a day. Then there are falls and fractures. And a horse is down, a tough buck fell past the wire. Patrick himself has survived a six-week coma and later, this accident in 2013 that could have ended his career. When I get to the wire, the horse had a heat stroke and dropped right by the wire. I had snap here, I had snap here, and I had snapped my ankle. And when I boy looked to the right, 
My foot was spinning the other direction. My doctor, he said, Mr. Husband, the bad news is, if you was a race horse, we had to put you down. And the good news is, what we put in here can't come back out. We have to put the whole foot in steel. My reaction to him is, um, can I ride again? He said, well, you just gotta keep your fingers crossed and deal with Mother Nature. With screws, rods, and a bolt to keep his leg in place, Patrick rode through the pain, and 2014 became one of his best years yet. In the last 16th of a mile, the Philly was fabulous this afternoon. Racking up 170 wins, achieving a 36th ranking in North America, winning the Queen's Plate for the second time, and the equivalent of 11.7 million US dollars in purse earnings that year, his cut was 7%. It's a great feeling, you know. I bridge this Philly on um, Saturday, and I call Barbados to tell everybody I'm coming home to celebrate, you know. With Barbados never far from his mind, he hosts a gathering at his home in Canada for fellow Caribbean jockeys and businessmen every Monday night. We'll move up here and can't get a chance to get back home. So I try to make sure that everybody still lives as one and you know, I'm, I'm in a position that I could try to keep everybody happy. Now in his 40s, Patrick may be turning a page in his career. While he faces lingering pains from his injuries and challenges from younger, upcoming rivals, he still has big riding dreams and plans to open a jockey school in Barbados, the country where it all started. That's all I know, that's all I love. I don't scare no horses, I don't scare the guy. I just, I just love it, just love it, just love it. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Love it. <laughs> So this is where we bring 18 degrees north to a close for this week. Join us online, look us up on Twitter or on Facebook. We're there to bring you Caribbean stories that have global impact. From all of us here at 18 degrees north, I'm Zara Burton. Thanks so much for joining us. See you next time. Eighteen Degrees North is a production of Global Reporters for the Caribbean in association with Take control of your diabetes with Caribbean Dreams Cinnamon Mint Diabetic Tea.